guys, it's Algirdas with Playing Tips. And before we start, I just wanted to quickly wish all of my American friends to have a great 4th of July. Make sure to spend some time with your friends, family, loved ones. Have a great time, but don't do anything crazy. Uh, the topic for this video is going to be how to pick the right mouthpiece size for yourself. So in this video, let's put aside all the brands of the mouthpieces and all that good stuff. We're talking about purely the size which will suit you. And this is going to be based um, regarding uh, the sizes for the trombones, uh, euphoniums and baritones. I'm not going to talk about the smaller or larger mouthpieces just because I'm not an expert on those. And um, from my understanding, it actually differs. The conceptions on picking the right size, size differs a little bit. Um, if you actually want me to make a video on those, leave a comment down below and I'll make sure to get the information and the opinion of the experts in that particular field. Anyway, let's get back to the size of a mouthpiece. So there are quite a few criteria and I'm going to discuss one of them today, which is the thickness and the size of your lips. So whenever I choose a mouthpiece or I'm testing a mouthpiece, First thing I want to do is make sure that my thick part of the lips, which is right here, is fitting inside the cup. So whenever I form my embouchure, which is supposed to look like this, I put the mouthpiece gently on and I try adjusting it to the point where I can feel that both upper and the lower thick part of my lips is fitting inside the cup, not on the rim, but inside the cup. So the mouthpiece size is covering my both upper and lower thick part of the lip nicely, equally, without jamming them together or leaving too much space apart. I'm good to go and try the mouthpiece. When it comes to euphonium playing, what that gives to me is the ability to direct my air straight into the shank of the mouthpiece without necessarily adjusting my embouchure too much and allowing me therefore to be more flexible, more agile and um, be able to do um, large intervals way quicker without you know, putting too much effort and keeping uh, the lips tied or fixed or whatnot. Now you've probably noticed that uh, there were quite a few professional players that were increasing their mouthpiece sizes gradually as the time went and their argument for that that um, the size of the mouthpiece, bigger size of the mouthpiece was um, increasing their ability to project and um, increasing the size of their sound and that is uh, correct to a certain extent but my personal experience whenever you put a larger mouthpiece um, and just to clarify, um, I'm using the size that I am using is the um, 5G on the Parker mouthpieces. Dennis Wick, that will be four. Showcase, I'm not exactly sure, but you can Google the size of these and then kind of do the comparison yourself to figure out. So my experience with larger mouthpieces, because I tried smaller, larger mouthpieces, whenever you put a larger mouthpiece on your face, it kind of gives you that impression that you can run the air a little bit easier and you don't have to center your embouchure all that much but in reality if you were to record yourself you'll probably notice no difference or barely any difference but the problem with that once you play for a little bit longer test the mouthpiece for like multiple weeks in euphonium range the larger mouthpieces they tend to fatigue your lips even if you have a great technique and your experience it does fatigue your lips a little bit more so it's Beneficial in mid range is maybe low range is because you can just kind of let your lips loose and just blow air and sound comes out. But that doesn't necessarily mean that that's the greatest way of playing the instrument anyway. So the largest mouthpiece using player um, I can think of at this particular moment would probably be Steve Mead. And uh, he used to for sure use number three on Dennis Wick for the large portion of his career, as far as I can remember. And I think he might have decreased it to 3.5 as the time went on, but I'm not 100% sure whether that's accurate information or not. So he used to use larger mouthpiece size from um, very, very early days of his playing. And 
he was kind of telling people that it helped him to improve, uh, to increase the size of the sound project a little bit better, but he would not necessarily recommend that size to other players. And number three is usually used with the players to double on euphonium and tuba, that's kind of in between transition. But if you were giving him to try a smaller size mouthpiece, he would still sound like Steve Mead. He would still have that crazy huge projectile sound and it's mainly because of his great technique. He has great internal spaces, great airflow and just an amazing player in general. And um, there's a bit of misconception that, in my opinion, that you need a bigger and bigger and bigger mouthpiece to the point where it's not exactly making all that much difference in the way you sound but it's starting to affect your playing in a negative way. So that being said, you can still switch between your mouthpiece depending on what you're trying to achieve. Maybe um, decreasing the size of the mouthpiece. And uh, the main criteria I use is the thickness of your lip. If the thick part of your lips fits in the cup nicely, you don't want any extra space because that kind of um, decreases the ability to focus and center your embouchure. Uh, but also you don't want to pick the mouthpiece which is too small because then um, the sound is not going to be projectable and you're going to get those uh, little gaps in between your intervals because uh, you'll have to adjust your mouthpiece uh, position or your embouchure position too much and too often. Sometimes I do double on baritone or bass trumpet and that's when you kind of want to adjust your mouthpiece size and the thickness of the cup, even the shank size because they have different entries and etc. And that's where I believe these mouthpieces which are Parker mouthpieces comes in handy because they have um, adjustable rims and uh, adjustable cups and adjustable si uh, shank sizes so you don't need to carry like 20 different mouthpieces. I always carry two cups, baritone, euphonium and um, different shanks which uh, will fit different instruments. And uh, just again letting you know, I'm not sponsored by this company, I just think these are great mouthpieces and they didn't ask me to make a review or anything, uh, anything like that. I just honestly think these are really, really, really good mouthpieces and you should give it a try. A little bit more expensive than Dennis Wick or um, some other brands but they're definitely worth it. So just the last point before we wrap this video up. Uh, there are definitely more aspects towards choosing the size of your mouthpiece and the actual mouthpiece than just the um, thickness of your lips. Um, I'm going to cover more of the aspects in the upcoming videos because I don't want to keep my videos too long and they get a little bit boring and etc. So uh, if you think I missed out something, I'm most likely going to cover it in the upcoming videos. But do leave a comment down below if you think there's something worth mentioning. As always, thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already. If you have any questions which you would like me to cover in the future upcoming videos, uh, make sure to post your question on my Facebook page, which I'm going to put the link down in the description box below. I just recently started using Twitter, so make sure to follow me um, there as well. And as always, uh, thanks for watching. Stay safe, work hard, keep motivated. Till the next time.